Hello, my name is Shane Bergsma, and this is Generating Complex Realistic Cloud Workloads Using Recurrent Neural Networks. This is joint work with my colleague Tim Zile from Huawei's Toronto Research Center and Eric Sendarevich and Chris Beck from the University of Toronto. So the motivation for this work is to improve decision-making in large compute clouds, like the cloud we operate with Huawei Public Cloud. There are many decisions you have to make in this operation. You need to decide where to place uh, incoming job requests, so in our case, virtual machine requests, onto which physical servers to place them. And then after a while, you have to decide whether you're running out of capacity and you need to add more physical servers to your cloud. If you don't do a good job placing the VMs or you request or you add too much physical capacity, you're going to have low utilization, high fragmentation, and this is a big problem. Um, Hadari et al. report last year in a paper about the production VM scheduler for Microsoft Azure that even 1% in fragmentation reduction can lead to cost savings in the order of $100 million per year. Better workload models can improve cloud decision making. So if you have a better model, you can generate better forecasts of future workload, and then you can make better purchasing decisions, ensuring you don't have too much or too little capacity for your workload. But also if you have a generative model that can actually create traces, then by having better traces, we can have a better scheduler design, optimizing the performance of the scheduler, like the latency, and minimizing the amount of resources needed by the scheduler. But you can also use those traces to optimize placement algorithms so that you can have better scheduling quality and have less fragmentation. In this paper, we propose a probabilistic generative model of job demand. So our model will generate a trace, a sequence of jobs, each with an arrival time, a duration, and a set of requested resources. In this presentation, we're gonna visualize the requested resources with a color to basically represent the flavor of the job. And the width of the, this box represents the duration, the lifetime of that job. We can also use our model to compute the probability of an existing workload trace. And in fact, we train our model in order to maximize the likelihood of existing historical data. Why not just use historical data itself? Well, for one thing, historical data is too small. So there's modern schedulers based on deep reinforcement learning that might have millions of parameters. And it's essential that you train those systems on synthetic data, a lot of synthetic data, because it will just easily overfit whatever historical data you have. Also, historical data is not flexible. So we're often asked things like, what if there's 10 times as many requests or 10 times the arrival rate in the future? Can our scheduler handle it? And there's no real way to, to just multiply historical data by a factor of 10 because it won't have the same daily and hourly seasonality and patterns as real data. But if you have a model like we do that lets you adjust the arrival rate parameter, you can easily do things like stress testing. Also, historical data quickly becomes obsolete. So we actually train our model to generate future periods of time, generate the workload in future periods, and you know you, you may have like a, a flavor that only started being used within the last couple of weeks. It's not even in most of the historical data, but you can make sure that it's in the data that you train and tune your scheduling systems on. Also, historical data is not probabilistic, so it doesn't really support decision making under uncertainty. So with a model, you can do things like say, hey, do we have enough capacity for 95% of the possible workloads we'll see next week? Another question is why not use traditional workload generation methods? So you may know that traditionally jobs or virtual machines in our case are assumed to arrive independently according to a Poisson distribution. And when you're generating data, you would just sample a flavor for each job independently from some multinomial distribution, and then maybe sample again from some independent distribution for the job's lifetime. But we find this approach 
doesn't work very well. It doesn't fit the real data very well. It doesn't produce qualitative realistic traces, and it leads to the wrong conclusions in applications like scheduling and capacity planning. Instead, we propose a three-stage workload generation process. This process runs in a, in a set of specific periods. So for example, in one five-minute period, you generate a little mini trace. The input is the temporal information for that period. So say the time of day, the day of the week. And the output for the first step is the number of batches that will arrive during that period. So historically, people may have modeled the number of VM arrivals, but we've shown the paper that it's actually a much better fit to model the number of batches as arrivals under a Poisson distribution. Once you have this number of batches and the temporal information, the second step in our generation process is to generate the sequence of jobs resource requirements. So in this case, the sequence of VM flavors. Um, to do this, we use a standard multi-class LSTM, basically a little soft max for the, the probability of the next flavor at each point. But the LSTM is a very good technology for this because it has a long-term memory that lets us model long-range interjob correlations. Once we've generated the, the flavor sequence, we then input all this information into our duration model that outputs a lifetime for each of the jobs in the sequence. And for this, we use a novel LSTM that predicts a discrete lifetime hazard distribution at each, at each job. And this allows us to account for things like censoring, where you have incomplete lifetime information in your historical data. And again, it also lets us model long-term interjob correlations in lifetime. Yeah, once you have this sequence of jobs with flavors and lifetimes, you basically created a little mini trace for one period, and then you can slide this uh, period along and generate a trace for a longer period of time, say for like a two week or three week period. And you can repeat this process many times. So qualitatively, if you visualize existing traces with these colors and, and widths for representing VMs, you can see that there's a, a lot of correlation in the properties of um, VMs in real data in terms of their lifetime, in terms of their flavor. But in workload that would be generated by a naive approach, you don't see those correlations. It's sort of just a random mix of different flavors and different batches. The workload generated by our approach does have these correlations and important uh, properties. It, it looks like realistic, real cloud workload. So the model also allows us to do better capacity planning than you could do if you use the naive approach. So I won't get into all the details of our experiments, but basically we tried generating uh, 500 different futures with, and then computed the, a 90% confidence interval over the, the total number of CPUs that would be used in that future time period. And we found that the LSTM generated traces captured the future workload pattern very well, surprisingly well, on our um, production data here from Huawei Cloud. And we've come to see that this, this tool can, can be useful for medium-term capacity planning. Also, for optimizing our scheduler, we wanted to know whether the traces generated by our LSTM-based approach were similarly hard to pack or easy to pack as real test data. And what we found is that the naively generated traces were misleadingly easy to pack, whereas the LSTM generated traces pack similarly to real data. So we concluded that we can tune our placement algorithms on LSTM generated data. Okay, there's a lot more details in the paper, but um, we have successfully modeled real production VM workload. We're able to generate complex, realistic workloads by modeling long-range interjob dependencies. And this tool is very promising for medium-term capacity planning and for optimizing the performance and quality of VM schedulers. The code is available online. Okay, thank you very much.